Hello everyone and welcome to another Make It Monday. I'm Sarah with Beyond Fabric and today we are going to show you how to make a tacky blanket. Sensory blanket, tactile blanket, whatever you want to call it, we are making one of these. Some of you are probably wondering, what is a tacky blanket? Well, it is just, again, a tactile blanket for your children, babies, toddlers, something to get them um, exploring the world around them. The blanket has two different sides, front side and a back side. We are using two different textures. Again, we want to engage their senses. So we have a flannel on one side and a minky dot on the other side. And then it will have a series of ribbons going around it in different textures. So we have some rickrack here, which again is a different texture and shape. And also the colors will be different. Just again, we want to engage their senses. So we have satin, we have grosgrain, we have one with the little eyelet around it. I would not uh, use pom-poms. We don't want something that they can rip off and swallow and choke on. We don't wanna hurt our babies. Um, so we just want to get a variety of textures, colors, and sizes. So we've got our ribbon spread out here. We are going to cut them into six inch pieces. I have a total of 18 ribbons. Um, nine different ribbons, but I'm using them twice. And again, they are cut at six inches. Our squares for our front and our back are gonna be cut at 16 inches. So we will have a finished 15 by 15. The taggy blankets can be a variety of sizes. This is just the size that we chose to use. It's nice and it's big enough you could put in the car seat with them, but not too small. And you, they could just drag it around. So it's small enough they can drag around. Let's get started. In addition to making the taggy blanket today, if you're watching this on YouTube, stay tuned at the end of the video for a bonus video on an easy receiving blanket. To recap, again, we have our two pieces and we have all our ribbon, and now we're just going to lay our ribbon around, get an idea of how we want to place them. So I'm gonna start with this one here, and we wanna make sure it is right sides together. This one over here, actually. So again, right sides together. This one's a little hard to tell, but there are dots on it. So we wanna make sure it is right side down. Space them out. Now, if you would like, you can measure in between these if you want to have exact spacing. I am not, because again, I want it to be a little quirky and different. Although I am doing a pattern because I can only be so quirky and different. And just make it visually appealing. I really like that rig wrap. It's cute. So again, you'll see different sizes and textures. We want that. We don't want it to all be the same. Once you're happy with the placement, clip them or pin them. When we go to the machine, these are actually going to be folded over and sewn like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're gonna sew these on once before we sew the other side. The reason these are gonna be pulled on, yanked on, have stuff attached to. So we wanna make sure that they are stitched on a couple of times so that they do not get yanked off. I'm also not doing much larger than this. You can do them a little bit smaller. Um, again, we've cut them at six inches. I don't want to make them too big because we don't want it big enough that they can get around like their neck. That would not be good. So keep these things in mind. 
but this is a good size that you can still attach like a passy to. Or toys if they're in the car. Now we have our tags attached to our taggy blanket. So we're going to sew all the way around this one time to secure them before we add the other side to it. Let's go attach. So I have adjusted my seam allowance to be a quarter of an inch in because when we go to attach the other side, we're gonna do it at a half inch. So right now this is going to be further in because again, we want to secure these tags. And just stitch all the way around. Needle down, pivot. So these tags will actually be stitched on three times. Right now, when we attach the front side and then when we flip and top stitch. back to the beginning, touch thread, and now we're going to attach the other side. If we have any ripples going on, we're going to go ahead and press this back flat from the back side, not from the front. We don't want to burn our ribbons. Just reinforcing those stitches there. I'm just using a neutral thread for this project. I love a medium gray. It just seems to blend with everything. But when we go to top stitch at the end, if you want to do a pop of color around the edge, you can. All right, let's attach our other side. So now we have all our tags faced in because we don't want them caught when we go to sew the other side. If you have to put some pins in, you can, um, but once we put the minky on, it should hold it in place. Again, we're just using two different textures. You can do a cotton, a flannel, a cotton and a minky. You could do a satin and a minky, a satin and a flannel. It's just nice to have two different textures. Okay, we're going to put some clips in, hold these together. Now that it's clipped, let's go and sew all the way around, except for a hole which we will use to flip it with. So Minky is one of those fabrics that's super soft. We love to cuddle with it, but it usually is not our favorite to sew with. Uh, the reason why is it stretches and shifts. So we wanna make sure the Minky is face down when we go to join these two to help limit some of that stretching. If you end up with more off on one side, it's fine. Um, we can cut that off, but just try to not pull or stretch it as you're sewing. And again, the stretchier side face down. Right sides lined up. Now we're going to use our half inch seam allowance.
over to the side. Make sure to leave your hole to flip it. So here's the hole. And now we're going to clip those corners. Clip before you flip. Find your hole. Reach in there and pull it out. Then take those corners, use your handy dandy stiletto, and poke those corners. So now we're going to press from the front side. We don't want to press from the back side with the minky dots because we'll make our dots disappear and we don't want to do that. Uh, you can use a press cloth. I would actually encourage it. I'm going to do it just lightly so that you can see what I'm doing, but I would normally lay just a thin piece of fabric over the top of this so that we don't burn our ribbons. So we're just doing it lightly. And I want to make sure that where my hole is, that that is folded in. So when we go to top stitch, that will close that hole. So just gently pressing it, making sure that our ribbons are poked out. So when, when, when we go to top stitch, the process is a lot smoother. Now, top stitch around it. Now you can do a decorative stitch around the edge, straight stitch, doesn't matter again. You could change the color of thread if you wanted it to pop. We're just gonna keep using our neutral gray thread and I'm doing just a straight stitch. So while we're doing this, we're going to once again, stitch over our little tags making sure they're extra secure. When you get to where that opening was, make sure it is all the way pushed in so that we can close that hole up. Looks good. are out so that you don't accidentally stitch over them. I am using a walking foot. It feeds over the fabric just a little bit easier than a regular presser foot. layers. I am holding on to the back side to apply tension, but I'm not pulling it through. If you go yanking or pulling it, you can break a needle. And nobody wants to do that. But it's just to apply a little bit of tension to help it keep going through and keep it guided. Back stitch, and you're done. 
And now we have a lovely taggy that your loved one will love, hopefully. And again, thank you for joining us for Make It Monday. And if you are watching this on YouTube, we have a bonus video for an easy receiving blanket. So make sure to check that out. And if not, we'll see you next time on Make It Monday. If you're interested in making your own taggy blanket but don't want to pick everything out, we have put together some bundles for you. They're available on our website, www.beyondfabricinc.com. In your bundle, you're going to get your ribbons. Now remember, you're going to cut them at six inches each because you're going to use two of each one. So you have 13 inches right around there, so you have some wiggle room, but you're going to cut these each into six inch pieces. And then your fabric is overcut because again we are going to cut a 16 by 16 square for our tutorial but I do pre-wash and I encourage you to pre-wash so if you do I would either do a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine on these raw edges or you could take your pinking shears and pink it or you could use your pinking blade on your rotary cutter and go around the edges or if you have a serger, you can serge all the way around before you throw it in your wash so it doesn't fray like crazy. And then after they come out of the wash, you can iron this one, not this one, and then cut them 16 by 16. So this will be in your kit so that you can make one of these. There's several styles to choose from and we'll be adding more all the time. They are $9.89 a kit and we hope to see what you make. Thank you. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, blah, blah. blah. <laughs>